scheme of community polytechnics. In pursuance of the recommendations of All India Council for Technical Education, the erstwhile Ministry of Education, Government of India, has during the year 1978-79 instituted on experimental basis the scheme of community polytechnics at selected diploma level in institutions all over the country to promote community or rural development on scientific lines through transfer of technology to the rural areas. The scheme was initially instituted at 35 institutions. Major areas of activities assigned to community polytechnics are socio-economic survey, manpower development and training, technical services, transfer of technology, support services, dissemination of information, promotion of total integrated village development. Manpower development and training. Various steps which are followed under manpower development and training are as follows. Survey and selection of trainees and trades. Training program in various skills project formulation, providing help in getting financial support, entrepreneurs development for setting up cottage, village, small scale industry for self-employment. The duration of these courses range from three to six months. The training is being imparted by the community polytechnics at their campus as well as in the extension centers set up at appropriate places in rural areas. The performance of community polytechnics has so far been very encouraging. As per the information available, it is aimed that gradually every polytechnic is able to train at least 500 rural boys every year. The total number of community polytechnics today is 107 including the 61 community polytechnics which were selected in December 1985 and the 10 community polytechnics started in November 1984 to cater to the needs of minority concentrated areas. Within a period of six months, these new community polytechnics would also be operational. And when fully operational, all the 107 community polytechnics would be able to train 50,000 rural boys and girls every year. During the seventh plan period, it is proposed to further expand the scheme and depending on the availability of funds, it is intended to cover all the polytechnics under this scheme by the end of the plan period. In the event of all the polytechnics being covered under the scheme of community polytechnics, it may be possible to train about four lakh candidates through these short-term vocational technical training courses every year. We have six community polytechnic centers 
under the scheme of Ministry of Education and we have chosen these centers where there is a great need for self-employment. Achievements in manpower development and training. Number of trades in which courses were organized, 54. Self-employment, 40 to 50 percent. Other employment, 20 to 25 percent. Remaining, ad hoc jobs from time to time. The community polytechnics have already transferred 92 technologies to rural areas. Besides, a large number of people have been trained for servicing and maintaining a lot of equipments, the various steps which are followed under transfer of technologies are as follows. Fabrication, installation, demonstration, education and training program, service and maintenance. Community Polytechnic takes the responsibility of transfer of technology through education and training program for awareness among and adoption of new technologies by the villagers, technical services and community support services to enable villagers to sustain new technologies dissemination of information to provide selective information to villagers to enable them to adopt and sustain the technologies. कितने बना लेते हैं एक दिन में आप कितने घंटे काम करते हैं 
आठ घंटे कितने पैसे बच जाते हैं काफी है ਪੰਚ ਮਿਲਕੀ ਰਾਮ ਜੀ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਟੱਕ ਪੰਡੋਰੀ ਪਿੰਡ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕੋਆਪਰੇਟਿਵ ਸੋਸਾਇਟੀ ਬਣਾਈ ਹੈ ਕਾਦੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਬਣਾਈ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਕਦੋਂ ਬਣਾਈ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਪਿੰਡ ਦੀ ਭਲਾਈ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਬਣਾਈ ਆ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਇਹ ਨੂੰ ਕਰੀਬਨ 5 ਸਾਲ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਬਣ ਗਏ ਨੂੰ ਸੀ ਡੀ ਸੀ ਮਹਿਕਮੇ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਮਿਲ ਕਰਕੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਬਣਾਈ ਆ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਖੇਤੀਬਾੜੀ ਦਾ ਵੀ ਕੰਮ ਇਕੱਠਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਮੱਛੀ ਦਾ ਤਲਾਅ ਵੀ ਬਣਾ ਕੇ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਕ ਤਲਾਅ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ 15 15 ਹਜ਼ਾਰ ਰੁਪਇਆ ਵੀ ਕੱਢਿਆ ਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਮਈਆਂ ਦੀ ਵੀ ਡੈਰੀ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬਣਾਈ ਆ ਮੁਰਗੀ ਖਾਨੇ ਵੀ ਘੁਲਾ ਕੇ ਦਿੱਤੇ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਵੀ ਬੜਾ ਅੱਛਾ ਕੰਮ ਚੱਲਦਾ ਆ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਤੇ ਹੋਰ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕੋਈ ਇੱਕ ਖਾਲਾ ਗੰਦਾ ਨਾਲਾ ਸਾਡਾ ਦੋ ਹੀ ਪਾਸੇ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਸੀ ਉਹਦੀ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਵੀ ਆਮ ਟੱਕਰਾਂ ਮਾਰਦੇ ਆ ਪਿੰਡ ਦੇ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਪਿੰਡ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾਣੀ ਆ ਵੜਦਾ ਆ ਜੋ ਸਾਡੇ ਬੱਚੀ ਬੱਚਾ ਉਹ ਸਭ ਪਾਣੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਦਾਂ ਬਾਰਿਸ਼ ਪਈ ਤੇ ਤਰਦੇ ਫਿਰਦੇ ਆ ਕਿ ਅੱਗੋਂ ਜੋ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਸੀ ਡੀ ਸੀ ਮਹਿਕਮੇ ਨੇ ਕੀਤਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਚੰਗਾ ਸਾਡਾ ਫਾਇਦਾ ਉਠਾਇਆ integrated rural development at this level community polytechnics are providing scientific and technological inputs to the management for total integrated rural development project for a given cluster of villages in social economic and infrastructure development however there are certain bottlenecks which impede the progress in the implementation of the scheme these are lack of adequate policy and administrative support to the community polytechnics by the respective state governments lack of adequate collaboration between the community polytechnics and the various development agencies concerned with the rural development lack of further involvement of the entire polytechnics in this important task in the absence of necessary monitoring and evaluation by state directorates of technical education to strengthen the community polytechnic movement to remove these gaps and to effectively implement this scheme of national importance the working group set up for vocationalization has recommended that all the 5098 vocational and technical training institutions including 400 polytechnics and 1400 industrial training schools should adopt the approach of community polytechnics to provide vocational education and training through this non-formal approach for diverse type of vocational courses of varying durations and at different levels
India is predominantly an agricultural country. Our people are agriculturists since time immemorial. Nearly 80% of our population earns its living through agriculture. Primitive man first developed a wooden plough to start the soil. He tilled the soil the best way he could for the purpose of raising more food per acre. The primitive man also observed that plants growing near cattle manure were having more growth rate. Thus we can say that man has been conscious of the crop yield since the very beginning. Man with his observations and creativity innovated various agricultural implements to suit his requirements. This is an indigenous plough and is the most common agriculture implement used by our farmers. In addition to plowing, it is also used for sowing, interculture and for harvesting the underground part of crop. Different types of desi plows are used in different parts of the country depending upon the condition of the soil. Mold board plow was developed to facilitate the soil turning process along with tilling of soil. This improved plough is used for turning under the heavy weed growth and green manure crops. Tractor driven mold board plough is used for large land holdings. It has a base with parts necessary for turning, lifting, and inverting the soil. A double disc plow is adapted to conditions where the mold board will not work, such as for dry, hard and stony soils. This is usually used for deep plowing. Harrows are the tillage implements used to prepare the land by breaking clods, cutting weeds, pulverizing the soil, covering seeds and smoothing the surface. Spike tooth harrow has a rectangular frame.
It has pointed steel pegs with their points towards ground. It is commonly used prior to broadcast sowing of seeds and is also used after sowing to cover the seeds for breaking the crust to facilitate germination of seeds. Spring tooth harrow is used in rough and stony ground. This type of harrow is used to loosen previously ploughed soil. Its teeth penetrates deeper than those of spike tooth harrow. In triangular harrow, the pegs are fixed along the three arms of the frame. The points are tilted backwards vertically so that the soil is not accumulated in front. Disc harrow does an effective job of cutting and covering. For larger fields, tractor-driven disc harrow is used. It has concave metallic discs which can be made to cut soil at desired depth by a manually controlled mechanism. A cultivator has a frame with a number of times for breaking and stirring the soil. It is usually tractor mounted and working depth is controlled hydraulically. The cultivator is mainly used for seedbed preparation, stubble cleaning and breaking, general weed control and cultivating between row crops. A leveler commonly known as Karaha is used for leveling the undulating fields. The level field receives uniform penetration of irrigation water with high efficiency. The leveled field thus becomes ready to receive timely agriculture operations such as ploughing, seeding and interculture. Planker is generally a rectangular section of wooden log 
provided with two pegs for hitching. The main purpose of operating this implement is to crush, grind and tear the clods to produce a smooth, well-packed seed bed. Traditionally, stubbles of previous crops were collected manually by one or more persons. But nowadays, a stubble collector is used for collecting stubbles. It is provided with metallic hooks fastened on one side for collecting the weeds. Puddling of soil is one of the most common farm operations in paddy growing areas. Open plate type puddler has a series of metal blades fastened to cast iron hub at an angle. The puddler is used for churning of soil in the presence of excess water to kill weeds and to facilitate the transplanting of seedling by softening the soil and to reduce the leaching of water in the soil. A rigger is required for row planted crops. It has a V-shaped shear either rigidly fixed or hinged to the mold boards. It is generally used for making field furrows or channels. It is also used for earthing up operation for crops like potatoes, sugar canes, etc. After the field has been prepared, seeding operation begins. Broadcasting is the oldest and simplest method of sowing seeds. Seeds are scattered on field by hand. A funnel type seed drill is the simplest seed drill. It consists of a funnel, a vertical tube fitted to the indigenous plough. The seed tube is tied to the body to drop seeds just behind the plough in furrow. A seed drill is used to open furrows to a uniform depth, dropping seeds uniformly without injury to cover the seeds and compact soil around them. Two row country seed drill is an improvement of the traditional funnel type seed drill. Here two metallic tubes are attached to the funnel type seed drill. This drill opens two furrows simultaneously and drops the seeds in the furrows. A seed come fertilizer drill is used to combine the operations of seeding 
and applying fertilizer in the fields together. There are two separate chambers for keeping seeds and fertilizer. The ratio is adjusted with the help of adjusting levers, raising and lowering devices. For large land holdings, tractor driven seed come fertilizer drill is used. Traditionally, ridge making is done manually by two persons operating the implement. One pushes the implement down for collecting soil and the other pulling the rope tied to the implement. Nowadays, bullock drawn ridge maker is used to make bunts. Among the indigenous type of hand hoe, the khurpi is the most popular. Its basic parts are a small handle for the grip and a cutting blade. The khurpi with long narrow blade is preferred for weeding around the plants. Hand holes are available in different shapes and sizes in different parts of the country. A wheel hoe consists of a time to place cutting tool on, a wheel and two handles. It is usually used for interculturing. The hose is operated by pushing it through short distance each time. The simplest and oldest method of fertilizer spreading is the scattering of fertilizer in the fields by hand. Part of the fertilizer is added as top dress on the crops. Chemicals need to be applied on crops for protecting them from various pests and diseases. Different kinds of spraying and dusting implements are used for this purpose. A backpack knapsack sprayer is commonly used implement for spraying insecticides and pesticides. It is provided with a hand pump 
and large chamber containing chemical solution. A uniform pressure can be maintained by keeping the pump in operation. The chemical is uniformly spread over the crop with the help of a fine nozzle. Another method of spraying is through compressed air sprayer. It consists of an air pump mounted in an airtight chamber. The pressure is developed by pumping air into the tank and spray is thereby forced out. A separate tank is provided for the chemical solution. A rotary type hand duster is used for spraying powdered chemicals on plants. It is provided with an enclosed fan geared to a hand crank and a hopper holding the chemical dust. The duster is usually fastened to the operator by means of a shoulder strap. Harvesting of field crops constitutes one of the most labor-consuming operations of farming in India. The sickle has remained the universal harvesting tool for all field crops. Nowadays, sickles with improved designs are in use in different regions. Threshing can be done by beating the crop with a stick. When natural wind is blowing, traditional charge is used for winnowing. Threshing of cereals, pulses, and oil seeds is done mainly by treading under the bullock's feet when a small amount of the harvested crop is to be threshed. Foot operated winnowing fan is used to create sufficiently strong air blast when natural wind is not adequate. In some areas, all pad thresher is used for threshing wheat and other crops. A rotary paddy thresher is used for threshing paddy crops. Its main part is a wooden cylinder with metallic teeth all around its circumference. Threshing is done by holding the bundle of crop against the teeth of the revolving cylinder. The grains are thus easily separated out. Currently, an improved thresher is mostly used for wheat threshing. It has two main units, threshing unit and cleaning unit. Grain is collected in a container and carried for bagging. A combined harvester has been developed to carry out various functions like cutting, threshing and cleaning simultaneously.
It hits the standing ear heads as it moves over the field. The cut ear heads are then fed to a cylinder. The straw is then separated from the grain. The grain is then carried from combined to adjacent tractor trolley through a pipe for onward transportation. Although in the past, improvements have been made in agricultural implements, but still there is a lot of scope for further development in this direction so as to reduce the drudgery of farming community. <laughs>